really enjoyed your presence up here and of course the content that you shared with us. A couple things I'd like to just help or give an opinion on that might help you in the future. Your personal objectives, I actually forgot that. You wanted to avoid awkward pauses. You also want to uh, speak clearly and you, you wrote, don't get nervous, but getting nervous, I think, personally, is a good thing. Maybe you just don't want to show it. And honestly, I think I may have mentioned this last time, but you look very comfortable up here. Um, probably like me and some of us, we smile a lot, especially when we get nervous or things get awkward. But I don't think that your smiles, you're full of them, which is awesome. I don't think that's a sign of being nervous. Maybe you think it is, but you actually hold yourself very well up here. So, good job there. Um, as far as the awkward pauses go, you had a few. Um, I blame that on the PowerPoint and the timing. So, um, a little more practice may have made that a little more seamless. Um, but I am so glad you brought pictures or showed pictures. That makes the speech interesting and easy for us to follow. And it's a little entertaining to see you in all your emo -ness. Um, so thank you for taking that time to put that together for us and for making it work. Um, you also highlight you had some humor, so good job there. You made us laugh a couple times, a few giggles throughout. I would encourage you to follow the structure and work a little more on that. Um, your title, or uh, yeah, your title um, was... I know who I am and I know who I want to become. You spent a lot of time on who you are and who you were as a child and growing up and who you are with your friends and your family. Um, but you didn't spend really much time on who you want to become. So I would encourage you to work on that um, so your content reflects a little bit of what your title is. Your personal objective also was to speak clearly. I don't think any of us misunderstood or didn't hear anything. You were incredibly clear. Uh, enunciate well in your volume was perfect. I didn't trail off at all, so kudos there. And that is pretty much it. Last thing I would say is when you use PowerPoint, use it as support to what you're saying. Don't support the PowerPoint. That's personal opinion and personal experience. Use that to show you off, not the other way around. Thank you and good job. Thank you, sir. Awesome, good job. I'd like to call up Diana Tim, who evaluated Adrian's speech. Coming up. Mr. General Evaluator, so I had the opportunity to evaluate Adrian's second speech, which was called Failure is Not an Option. And first of all, this is an extremely relevant topic, especially during this point in the semester. <laughs> it's, you had a really catchy intro, I really like that. It was not what I was expecting when, when you brought up Walt Disney, um, Ford, and just kind of went back to their failures and how they managed to overcome them and make something much greater. You had a really good flow to your speech, and I really like that. It was really easy to follow where your introduction ended, where you moved on to your content, what your main tips were, you numbered them. That was really helpful. <coughs> I really like that you were very clear and organized, and that you put emphasis on it. Was, you had a really good way of presenting it. The tips that you had were also really helpful, for example, analyzing your failure, and just going back to accepting yourself, not being too hard on yourself, realizing that you have boundaries, you have limits, and not to push yourself past the breaking point. That's something that I think a lot of people tend to overlook when they kind of get into the really the mood that, okay, I can do this, and I'm not going to let anything stand in my way, and then they break themselves, and that's unproductive. So I, I thought it was really good that you pointed that out. And also really good that you did emphasize to do, not just try. If that's something that also presents a barrier. You were very confident up here, and you have a really <coughs> genuine presence, so that comes off really, really well. You were very energetic, 
but not too much. It was all very appropriate to what you were saying. You had really good eye contact as well. The only thing that, um, just because I was sitting in the back and there was kind of some shuffling in the room, some, some things didn't carry so well. So maybe in the future, project a little bit more just for the people that are sitting in the back. Overall, it was a really great speech. It was very inspired just to get out of the comfort zone, but also keep your limits in mind. And also emphasize that we're all learning and that it's okay to, to fail sometimes, but not let that discourage you. So thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. General Evaluator, fellow Toastmasters, distinguished guests, and especially Janice. I had the opportunity to evaluate your second speech, which was entitled Quinceanera. Is that, yeah? Okay. Your goals were to have smooth transitions, to avoid filler words, and to make sure that the audience was engaged. And I would say that you, you did pretty well on these goals. You had some very smooth transitions, you had some filler words, but it wasn't distracting. And I was definitely engaged, I, I learned a lot. <clears throat> So I thought that you had a great delivery overall. Uh, you had just a very genuine presence, as Diana coined the term just now. Um, I felt like you were talking directly to me, which is a great quality to have when you're delivering a memorized speech. You, you didn't fall into the pitfalls of being robotic or seem ingenuine. Something I thought you could work on was you were back here, and somehow you, you started off you know, really great over here, and then you, you just migrated to the back, and then you just became hidden. And I don't know, maybe Kevin, well he has a clear eyesight, but someone in the back maybe couldn't see you. So maybe next time work on being a little more open, being in the center of the room, and kind of addressing from the center. Um, I thought that you had a great enthusiasm, especially when you were talking about making your dress. I thought that was one of the highlights of the entire speech, because I could really tell that you put a lot of time into this, and that you really enjoyed the process. Um, there was one hiccup where you, you, you kind of went back here and said, oh, I messed up, I lost my train of thought, and you had to look at your notes, which wasn't a huge deal. But I'd recommend in the future that if you mess up, maybe don't mention it to the audience. Because <laughs> we don't know that you messed up. And I do this a lot myself. If I lose my train of thought, I say, oh, crap, I have no idea what I'm talking about right now. But maybe you just take that extra 30 seconds to think and digest, and because you know your speech. So just deliver it from the heart, which you did. Um, I thought that your visual aid was nice. Uh, you, you had pictures, and I don't think any words, which was nice to just digest the pictures instead of having to read them. And so I thought that was really great. Uh, I love your speech. I love learning about you, about the quinceanera. Um, I'm really looking forward to your next speech. Thank you. Good job. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and guests, and especially Jasmine. This is your tenth speech. You're done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're not done. <laughs> there is many more speeches you can do beyond the toast, beyond the competent communicator. When we get your information processed, we're gonna send it off, and you're gonna get two manuals to work on your choosing. Because when you get done with your competent communicators, you um, you get a choosing of two specialty manuals. Like with mine, I got the entertaining speaking and telling the story. <laughs> so you, that's a more of an incentive for you guys to get through your speeches, but. Pertaining to Jasmine, this is your 10th speech, good job. I really liked your title because we can all relate to walking a tight rope, except, I wish I could talk to you all. <laughs> no, anyhow, it was a great topic, we all can relate to it. We're, we're, we're college students, we have all this stress, we're all, Jasmine do this from your dad, Jasmine do that from your parents, or, yeah, it's just really, it's we all get stressed and I feel like something we can relate to. You did the Toastmasters intro, that was very awesome. Um, also how you like to turn into a Toastmasters testimonial as well, how your grandmother had helped you, and then you saw, saw the booth mm -hmm. last spring, and then you're like, oh, I'm gonna run away first, but doesn't, no, I gotta 
stick through this, I gotta do good. And so you joined our club. And since you've joined our club, you have flourished into an awesome speaker, and not only that, a leader as well. I like the use of your body language, your all over the place with like Jim Street in the booth and like you have the prop of your the skirt, fashion maker, I like. <laughs> and um, I also have like an emotional appeal. Some of, some, some of us may have never lost a relative. Like Kevin saying you, you lost your grandmother. I lost my grandmother as well. And she was an important figure in my life. So I feel like there's all another level we can connect upon. As far as criticism or recommendations, you had good vocal priority, you certainly inspired us, so I don't have to say you're perfectly fine, but I seriously cannot think of anything that you could do. But you know, as I always say, there's always something. But I seriously cannot think of it. That's nice. Good job, Jasmine. Okay, general evaluation, that's me. <laughs> okay. Can I get the timer's report from Anthony? For the entire meeting or just for that? Just this. Okay, so for our evaluators, everyone met the time requirements. Good job, guys. Mm -hmm.